hey, today we're going to be looking at GA4. Let's walk through. Hey, guys, most of you know that GA4 is now the de facto Google Analytics tool. Forced into it last year. But for many people, it's the first time that they're really diving into it as they started to do year-end reporting uh, for 2023. And people are stumbling, and it's not the same as Universal Analytics. So we're going to take a walkthrough of GA4 just to get the basics down so that you can see what is and isn't available and how things are laid out, what you can do. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to dive in. We've got uh, your typical GA4 setup. This is for a retail site. So that is going to be slightly different than uh, the Futures to Content site because we will have uh, monetary values and stuff assigned to the conversions. So this is the main home screen. These sections are going to be different from you for you, depending on what you have recently accessed. These suggestions are also going to be different for you based on your data and what Google thinks you want to see. And also your previous views of the site or of the uh, report. So let's take a look at the main sections. So one of the things I'll look at first is I'm going to assume, by the way, that you've already implemented GA4, that you know how to do that, that this is not, um, that it's already set up. If you haven't implemented GA4, we'll have a different video um, for for that uh, to walk you through that process. The Let's take a look at the admin. This has changed recently, so you may not be super familiar with the new layout, but we'll just take a quick look. This is a little bit more in line with uh, how some of the other admin sections for other Google tools is set up. Um, so you can see we have the basic account details. We have the individual properties set up. So you may have an account, for instance, that has multiple properties under it that has different websites or um, even if you have apps or that type of thing, you're measuring those separately. Um, so you have the property details, who can access it. Uh, you also have account level access up here, your account change history. So who changed stuff uh, so that you can see what's going on with that. Property change history, scheduled emails. We did a video about this recently and I'll link to that. Um, you can schedule your reports very simply and easily now. Um, if you have admin access, I believe you have to have admin access to do that. Um, so the uh, scheduled emails, those are the ones that are already set up. Your data streams, this is going to be whether data is coming from the web or multiple websites or an app and or an app. Data collection, uh, this is um, where your data is coming from, whether you're turning on signals and that kind of stuff. Uh, data retention, this is an important thing to look at. By default, it, switched, it starts at two months. Um, and the most you can set is 14 months. So what this means is that the data in your reports, so the dashboards and stuff that we're going to show you, uh, it does not have a cutoff of 14 months necessarily. Uh, what is cut off at 14 months is explore. We'll take a look at that. Um, your explore are the custom dashboards that you can set up. 14 months, by the way, I don't know why they came up with that number, but it makes your year reporting pretty much next to impossible. So for instance, if you were looking at doing your year end reports for 2023 and you wanted to look at data for 2022, even if you had GA4 set up, you wanted to create a custom report in uh, Explore, that data is not available. So the workaround for that is to turn on uh, BigQuery, which is a Google product that is theoretically free for you if you have GA4. However, once you get above a certain amount of data and a certain amount of queries, they do charge. So um, the only way to get around that is if you export manually the data or if you uh, connect it to another data repository like BigQuery or some other third-party data repository, then you can gather more than 14 months to do that custom reporting. That is a big um, uh, problem with GA4 now that did not exist in Universal Analytics. Universal Analytics kept your data for forever. Um, so, uh, I would recommend that you highly, that you change that to 14 months so that you at least get it there. So most of these are relatively explanatory. Um, this is where you can see all your events. For instance, these are all the default events on your site, as well as any custom events that you've created and, um, have started to 
to measure on the site. So this is where you can see um, all of those events. It's everything from purchase to scroll. Um, most of these are out of the box um, with Google's reporting. Um, this is a Shopify site. So some of this has been added via the Google um, app that is on this site. So that is the, the events. And then um, you can mark these, by the way, as conversions here as well. So uh, purchases are automatically marked as a conversion. You see, you can't uncheck that. It's a conversion. But for instance, if you have a non-retail site um, and you want, if you have a custom event for, for instance, a, a download or a form submit, like right here. So say on this site, we wanted a form submit to be a conversion. Uh, we can do that. We can just toggle that on and off. And going forward, that will be a conversion. It will not affect your historic data. Um, this is your audiences. Um, we can talk about that. I believe we have another video where we talked about this a little bit more in depth, where you can create audiences and segments. Um, this is extremely important. If you have specific audiences that you want to understand how they're behaving, um, it could be people coming from certain marketing channels. It could be people based on demographics or behavior. Um, where this really comes in um, handy is when you want to then take this data and apply it to your Google ads. So maybe you want to only show an ad to people that have come to your site and done certain behavior. This is where you can build out that audience. Uh, we'll put a link to the video that we did about this before in the description. So, all right, so let's dive into the reporting. Let's take a look at the reports. So if we go to the reports tab, uh, this is the overall level of the report. So you can see it gives you some high level metrics like users, new users, average engagement, and the revenue for this time period. Um, and then the real-time view. Again, some of these cards may change or be different depending on your usage and the data that you're getting from your site. So these, if they look differently, that is it's because Google has decided to look differently. <laughs> uh, so this, this main uh, snapshot may be a little bit different for you, but uh, this is just a, the high level metrics for each of these areas, which you can then drill down into. Um, and these reports are also available. We'll go through them over here. So on the left-hand side is the navigation for your reports. If you don't see these, so if you don't have business objectives or even life cycle search console, you may not see search console here. If you haven't connected to it, there are other data sources that you can import into uh, GA4. So connecting to your Google search console, connecting to your Google ads. Um, there are connectors in the admin that allow you to do that. Um, I believe we have other content that have shown how to do that. So I'll link to that as well. Um, but that's, so if you don't see these, you can go to your library and you'll see the panels here. So if the panel is here, but you're not seeing it over on this side, you can publish it. So you can see that this is already published. So uh, we can unpublish it and it will remove that. You can also edit this collection. So you can say, hey, these are some of the data points that I would like to see in this. And you can drag and drop these over there. Um, and uh, that will then be part of that report. So you can customize each of these collections and um, add different groupings or metrics that you want to see or don't want to see. Um, maybe it's not important to you. So for instance, if you didn't want to see the search console for some reason, uh, you could unpublish it. You can either add other data to it. So you can edit this as you can see. So you can, for instance, right now it has queries and organic search traffic. If you had created, for instance, a custom report or something, you could do that over here and drag it over here and it will then be in that library for you. Okay. So that's why if you don't see it over here, that's why you can add it in the library section. So Let's go to walk down through these. These are essentially the, under the business objectives. A lot of these metrics are essentially the same as some of these other metrics that might be in your life cycle report. It's just grouping them differently because you may want to see certain reports. Um, like I said, you can actually then create custom reports uh, in your reporting tab that look at specific filters and that kind of thing, save that as a report, and then have it under here, depending on how you, what reports you want to see. Um, so let's look at acquisition, take a look at the acquisition overview. Acquisition is important. It's where your customers are coming from. 
So how did they get to your site, right? So you can see here, it has users and new users. Users are unique users that have come to your site during the date frame that you have selected. So it's different than sessions. Sessions are how many times they came back um, and is not necessarily tied to any unique user. So one user might come back uh, for 50 different sessions. So your session numbers are generally gonna always be higher than your user numbers. I can't think of a scenario where they wouldn't be. Um, so a lot of people like to look at sessions because it shows how much return traffic they're getting. Um, use unique users, again, is defined by that period of time. So if somebody came back five times during this date frame, it's only gonna count them once because they're a unique user during that time. Um, it's not gonna count every time they came back. So that's how users is different than sessions. So under here, acquisition overview, you have new users, you have the sessions, we just talked about is, is a different number than the unique users. You have, if you have Google ads turned on, we, uh, this site was previously running Google ad campaigns. This is why this is still turned on. We turned it on, we connected it through the admin. Um, lifetime value is a calculated metric that Google does, uh, not particularly well, <laughs> um, organic search queries and, um, organic traffic, uh, is all in here as well. Again, some of these may change depending on your use behavior and whatnot. User acquisition and traffic acquisition. Now, one of the reasons that these are different is there is a slightly different attribution model for how Google looks at these. So when it looks at new users and sessions and that type of stuff, um, it is looking at slightly different data. So sometimes your numbers will be different depending on the report that you're looking at. Um, up here is where, so we're looking right now on traffic acquisition for sessions. This is the default channel grouping that Google has set up. It's defined by where they think the people are coming from. And this is where you change your date. So you can choose one of the the dates or presets in here. You can choose uh, specific dates if you wanna look at, for instance, from a specific month period. And then you can also compare it. And so you can say, I want to compare that to the preceding period, or I want a custom period to compare it to same period last year. And then that will show you the comparative data in here and how that's changed over time. Okay. And so you can see, for instance, that um, in here, the, the organic search has improved dramatically by like 166% for users and 170% for sessions. So, and this will show you the different channels uh, defined by Google. Now, this you can change. So you can actually see, for instance, source medium or the platform or a specific campaign. So if you're running campaigns like either email or the names of the campaigns in uh, you know, social media or paid social media or paid search, um, if you've named those campaigns either in Google ads or through your UTM, that's passing that information into Google, that is where it will show that. Now, if you have a lot of unassigned, Google just doesn't know where to put that. It's a bucket that it doesn't know where it belongs to. So maybe it wasn't tagged correctly in the UTM. Maybe it's coming from a paid campaign, but you didn't. it wasn't tagged, so Google doesn't know how to assign it. Direct is basically just anything that Google's seeing that came directly to your site. So this is someone who typed in your URL um, or had a bookmark and came to your site. And then referrals are coming from other sites that have links to you. And then organic shopping, that's exactly what it sounds like. It is the Google shopping links. Okay. Um, you can also change these reports by clicking on here and you can then add more data to your individual report. So say that you wanted to look at uh, the landing pages that were coming from a specific uh, platform, right? So I want to see organic search and it's going to go down through and break out these landing pages that are coming from organic search. And it's going to be for each page. And so you can see, uh, this one went up dramatically 31,200, 31,200%. Uh, this one went up, uh, 141%. So you can break that down as, as much as you like. And you can also filter in this. So you could say like, you know what? I only want to look at organic search. 
Okay, and that's gonna break that out just for organic for you, um, so that you can go down through and look at their comparative data. Um, you can also set up filters over here. So you can customize this report. And for instance, like say you don't need this bar chart that gets in your way, you can remove it. Okay. You can choose different report data for this report. And you can also add a filter. So like how we did the organic search filter over here, you can actually do that over here permanently so that you can say, I want to save this as a report and I want to customize this by, you know, looking only at, uh, source medium. And I want it to exactly match and say, I only want to report on Google organic. I can apply it. So now this report is only going to go show Google organic searches for this period of time. Um, you can still drill down over here to add those landing pages or whatever else you want. But so now this report, I can then save this as a specific report that will save this filter. So maybe this is something that I want to look at and I don't want to have to go through the filtering process every time I can save this as a report. So, and you can also create a new card for for that. So I'm not going to do that here, but that is how you can filter those individual reports and create a dashboard that might be more what you're looking for. So that is the traffic acquisition. User acquisition is essentially the same, um, just different uh, acquisition model or different uh, attribution model. And again, you can change the dates. You can uh, edit the comparisons that you're looking at in this. So whether it's all users or um, you can do different dimensions in this, maybe you just want to look at age, gender, demographics, that kind of thing. That's all filterable up here. You can also share this with people. Okay, so you can download a file or share it. You can look at the insights. These are sometimes helpful, but um, you know, you can play around with that, see if that works for you. And then again, that's where we customize that report. So each of these sections, by the way, can be changed about how they're filtering. So right now it's filtering on uh, new users. You could say, hey, I want to filter this on revenue or order it on revenue. You click on that and it will change the order. And you click on it again and it'll do the other way around. Okay. So that's acquisition engagement. You have the engagement, average engagement time, sessions, seconds. So this again will change depending on your activity. But then you can also drill down so um, into these various reports. You can also see the events data. So this again will be uh, important if you have specific events that you want to trap custom events. Again, you can also filter if you want to find a specific event that you want to look at. Um, but this is the activities on the page or on the website. So whether it's form submits, page scrolls, all that kind of stuff, any events that you have set up. Conversions, that was where, remember, we added the conversion uh, or we can add a conversion in those events in the admin. You can make like, for instance, the form submit uh, a conversion and that's where you would see this. Now, the one caveat that I have to this is that when you're doing a reporting, so when you are reporting on conversions, if you make secondary conversions, what I would call them, a conversion. If you look at conversion rate or any of those things, it's going to calculate those into your conversion rate. So be wary of making too many things a conversion that you don't want to be just glommed into your conversion reporting. Because a lot of times, if you have these basic reports, you'll have, so let's take a look, for instance. So an in acquisition, if you go to acquisition overview, uh, let's go to the session default channel. You can come over here and you can see conversions. So there's 60 conversions. Now on this site, purchases are the only conversion. So that's 60, 60 uh, conversions, 60 purchases. If you had more than one, you would have to select which 
conversion you want to see specifically. Otherwise, it puts them all in here under conversion. And that gets a little clunky when you're trying to do your reporting. So if you want to have uh, a report that comp compares conversions, you can't easily do that unless you just use the specific event name um, because you can use an, an event name to see how that changes over here. So um, that one is 72 for form submits. Um, it's 60 for purchases. So uh, that's where it gets a little clunky if you're doing that. So just be wary of that. So that's conversions. Now, one of the annoying things in this reporting in Google Analytics uh, is GA4 is that it does not show conversion rate. Don't know why. Doesn't. Seems pretty stupid. All right. So because it's engagement, pages and screens is also extremely important. Uh, this is where people are leaning, uh, you know, looking at your content. So you have views, users, uh, engagement rate, how long they're staying on those pages, if they're can you know, doing certain events on those pages. Um, you know, so this is where you can say like, Hey, this is a specific landing page. We have a form there, um, or it's leading to form fill outs. Um, you know, is that something that's important? Um, and is it contributing in some cases to revenue? So that's pages and screens. And again, you can change this so you can, if you have content grouping set up in your J4 reporting, you can do that. You can look at the path, uh, the title, and then you can add metrics as well. It's just like we were with the other one. You can say, hey, maybe I want to look at the these for a campaign or something like that. Landing page. So this is different from pages and screens because this is where somebody landed on your site. So this is where they first interacted with your site. So typically the landing pages are going to be either coming from organic search or from your campaigns. So from a paid search campaign or a paid uh, uh, social media campaign, like with Facebook ads or something like that, this is where they're landing. And so this is where you can start to see is if these pages contributed to revenue. So if this particular page was a landing page, you can see how much the revenue contributed. Now, this is where you can also break this out and see traffic source. And you can see whether, uh, it was Google ads or something else. Um, and you can see where these landing pages were coming from to see how they contributed to the program. Okay. So this will also tell you too, um, if the engagement rate is very low on these pages, um, then you can start to see like, Hey, maybe this content needs to be improved for as a landing page. Um, so people are not liking this content. They're not responding to it and they're just leaving the site. And then this was a, um, page that we built that was organic landing pages specifically. Okay. Monetization is what it sounds like. And so it is the revenue that you're generating. Now, if you don't have a retail site, you can still allocate revenue for certain events. So you can say, Hey, if somebody submits a form, this is typically work, you know, X amount for me. And so you can set that up so that the revenue, um, will actually come through and you can see, um, total revenue, purchase revenue are two different things, depending on how you have that set up. Um, you can then see e-commerce purchases here. So this will actually show the products, uh, that are selling, right. Um, and their value for the period of time, this will help with your merchandising to understand which products are selling better, uh, which are performing better. Maybe you need to focus on more, um, and so this will tell you your, your merchant team, like, Hey, these are products that are popular. Let's add more of these kind of products and type of them. Um, in app purchases, we don't have app set on, we don't have publisher ads. Purchase journey is the, uh, journey through your shopping cart. Um, in some sites, this will not be set up correctly, uh, depending on how they've implemented GA4. So, uh, this is not done out of the box. So somebody has to go in into uh, like a Google tag manager or something like that and specify these events, um, through your data layer on your site. Now on a Shopify site, like this one, we were able to add the Google app and the Google app will do this because Shopify's checkout, we can't access unless you have Shopify, uh, plus, which is the enterprise solution, um, that you can actually access the shopping cart in regular Shopify. You cannot access the shopping cart and, um, so you can only see, you know, somebody add something to the cart 
and then if they check out, but by adding it, the, the Google app, it gives you insight into the shopping cart process. The reason this is important is you can see where people are starting to abandon the process, right? Like they started their session, they viewed a product, they added something to the cart, they began the checkout and then they purchased. So at some point in here, they didn't like something that was going to some part of that process. It could be shipping, it could be anything. So that's important to monitor, just to try to understand how people are using the cart, where some sticking points might be. You can do testing for pricing, you can do testing for shipping, uh, any of that kind of stuff. You can do additional coupons to maybe influence that behavior. But that's where you can see that uh, purchase journey from session. And then here's the checkout journey itself. This is, again, not always going to be visible because of how it's set up. Um, in this case, you're not seeing the ad shipping, ad payment, and that type of stuff um, because of how it's set up with the Google app. Um, on other sites, you can set this up manually where you have access to the shopping cart. Okay. Retention. This is just telling you your new users and that type of thing. So user retention, user engagement, all of which is very important. If you do have Search Console implemented, which we highly recommend, this is going to pull in the uh, Google Search Console data for you into this. So you don't have to go over to Google Search Console to see what queries and stuff like that people are using to get to the site. Now, what this is not going to show, unfortunately, as for the queries that people are using, uh, it's not going to show revenue. So it, this is just pulling in search data. It's not going to show you the revenue. If you want to see revenue from organic search, it doesn't show you by the keyword level, but it will show you by landing pages from organic search. So you can see what pages people are landing on, which gives you an idea of the kind of keywords they're looking for. Um, and you can look at the overall program of organic search um, to see what revenue that's driving, but you can't do it by keyword level. Only. And then just to show you the organic search traffic which is pretty self-explanatory. And again, this will show you the landing page and you can break it down by devices or country, that kind of thing. User attributes. This is going to show you about your users. So where do they come from? Cities, gender, if you... So some of this data is not available because it is being either filtered by or thresholding is set by Google because the numbers aren't big enough. Um, or we don't have signals turned on, which we don't have this turned on for this site right now. Um, before Google recently made this change, if you had signals turned on, you could get more user data. But it would set the thresholding for a lot of your reports. And so a lot of the report data that you'd go to look at would have this thresholding set out, which means Google's not showing you the, all, the full report because it doesn't want you to be able to get to the in individual user information. So they recently changed that. So you can have signals turned on and then it's not going to impact the individual reports as much. But um, this gives you an overview of uh, who's coming to your site, demographic details, about the countries and that kind of thing. Again, you can sort on this, so interests. And then audiences. Now, this is also where in the admin, you can build your audiences. So you can create new audiences of different types of people and stuff to, to look at. Um, these are the high level ones. And then tech is really what people are using. Are they mobile? Are they um, you know, what browser are they using, that kind of stuff. This is extremely important for developers as they're developing your site, understanding how people are using it. You can see that um, the majority of people coming to this site are actually mobile users, which is a lot of sites, like significantly more mobile users. So when you're designing your site, be aware of that. Make sure it looks good on mobile, make sure it performs well on mobile. And tech details is very similar. So this is like the browsers and technology that they're using. And again, this is just useful primarily for developers or if you're redesigning your website, understanding those users a little bit better. Okay, and real quickly, we'll look at Explore. We can go much 
deeper into depth with Explorer. But essentially, Explorer lets you do uh, custom reporting that may not be available in the dashboards. Um, so you can get very specific about um, the segments that you're looking at. You can create people just coming from Google ads or coming from a certain country or uh, whatever that demographic is, whatever that segment is. And then you can look at the various metrics that you want to look at. The nice thing about this is you can also then visualize this data differently. And so this, you you notice in those reports, um, in the regular Google reporting, it's not hugely visually attractive. <laughs> um, and so this gives you some better ability to do some visualization of the data um, in a limited capacity. But again, it's better than what's available in the reports. So if you need to drill down in data, you can do that here. There is a limit to how many rows this will show. And the visualization is not as good as if you do it in Looker Studio. So we've got a number of different videos that deal with Looker Studio. Um, you can take a look at those uh, in our on our YouTube channel. Um, those go into more detail about how to set up the visualization and tables and that kind of stuff. Again, this data is limited to 14 months. If you have it set to 14 months, otherwise it's only two by default. Um, and so this gives you the ability to do a number of different types of explorations. Um, they do have some templates here. So like freeform, which is what we were just in. Okay. Um, you can do cohorts, funnel exploration. No, actually, let me go back here. Path exploration is a default or template. Right. So this gives you a little bit more visualization of what's going on. Uh, this is the funnel. Okay. Remember, we don't have a lot of data because of how it's set up. Segment overlap. This can be very interesting when you look at um, different types of segments. So in this one, they're just looking at mobile traffic and tablet traffic, but you could look at, for instance, your campaign. So how many people are using paint search and organic search and what's the overlap there? How many people are, you know, using social media and something else or how many people, you know, so you can get, um, very start understanding your, your customer behavior and how that overlaps. So, you know, is there a segment that does those things that always buy and it helps you understand those segments better. Um, and then segment overlap, and then you can just use the Explorer and this gives you specific information about those user IDs um, so that you can start to funnel on how those people are, are actually using it. And the last section is advertising. And this is where you can start to compare the different attribution models. We've done other videos on this, so we can link to that as well. But this just shows you the difference between the old version of attribution, which was last click typically, and what is the default version now, which is data driven, which is Google's algorithm figuring out where it should credit these different channels. Now in this situation, because these guys don't have a lot of traffic, you can see that the variation between them is very low um, because there's not a lot of traffic. We see on other sites where sometimes this variation between last click and data driven can be 20, 30% difference depending on the channel. And then conversion paths uh, is what it sounds like. So this is telling you the steps of the conversion. So, uh, how, what, what different channels did they touch and how many times? So, you know, some people did an organic search 10 times. Some people did organic plus paid plus email, uh, before they converted. So this tells you all the touch points in your various marketing campaigns. So these guys are doing mostly organic search. They're not doing paid programs right now. Um, so, you know, the, the interactions either going to be direct or organic or something like that referrals or something. Um, so, but this will in, in, depending on your business, this can show all the different touch points to show you how people are going between marketing channels, give you a better understanding of where you should spend your money. So that is a not so quick overview, a simple overview of Google analytics for, there's so much more we can dive into and we will, and we have, so be sure to check out our channel for other videos, uh, around GA4, and we're going to keep doing more. If there's something you'd specifically like to see, let us know. If there's questions that you have, drop them in the comments. We are try to be very responsive to all your comments. And of course, if you want to, you know, hang around and subscribe and like these videos, we'd appreciate that too. It helps us out. 
And of course, stop by our website. And if you need help with GA4, you can let us know. We have full services around Google Analytics as well as other marketing services. So be sure to check out apothecamarketing.com and we can help you with your needs there. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.